um, got really inspired after watching the content flow six video where you were talking about fortnightly writing with a view to a book and while I've been making content for five years I haven't been tracking so I don't really have this analytics of like this is a stage two I haven't been progressing content in the way that you recommend but I feel really ignited about how simple it could be to write a book if I just wrote for an hour once a fortnight so I guess my question is um could I just follow a hunch and then when I articulated the question in the group, I remembered I should definitely ask my audience. But, you know, I sort of had the framework that could be a good structure for a book or I could just decide one. <laughs> and I wonder what you think in view of that. Does that question make sense? Totally makes sense. I love it. And uh, I, I bet others on the call are also interested in this. So, OK, um, where have you? So a couple things happening here. One is that I just want to briefly explain to everyone watching this, like there are basically two ends of the spectrum for how a book is written. The one end of the spectrum is the traditional way of doing it, which is what you usually think like, oh, you know, so-and-so is taking a year off to write a book. I mean, that's sort of like, you have to have a lot of privilege to do that, which some authors do, right? Like you usually think, oh, um, Renee Brown is going to take a six month sabbatical to write her next book. <laughs> it's like, who, who, which one of us has the time to do that? Or if you if you you know if you don't have time to take a six to twelve month sabbatical to write a book, you you'll just be working hard on writing the book like in the evenings and weekends. But you're like you're kind of like writing in your closet, and then to finally reveal the book when it's ready. And or I mean, you you probably have an editor if you're lucky to have enough to have a publisher. They will be the ones editing it for you. But it's like a it's basically and essentially a secret project until it's revealed to the public. And much of that secret project is new content or it's content that you've put in journals secret journals over the years so so that's the one spectrum is like keep everything all the content private until it's finally released as a as oh my my dear baby the book um launch you know all that big big uh, so that's one way of doing it the second way of doing it the other end of the spectrum i think it's the more modern way especially ever since blogging was created ever since social media content you know, and, and in fact, a lot of the popular authors are now using this second way, which is to blog a book, essentially. This is how I do it. I think it's much easier. It's much less pressure. And it's much more market driven. Because, you know, the way we blog a blo blog a book, yeah, some people literally just Oh, you, you kind of mentioned that, oh, I write, every, you know, I write an hour every fortnightly and then it'll become a book. I, what I'll add to that. So blogging a book has literally been, oh, I'll blog every day, I'll blog every week and then I'll put it into a book. But my, my addition on top of that is the whole stage one, two, three content, which is stage one is casual exploratory. Stage two is repurposing and, and redistributing what's worked from stage one. And stage three is turning your content into a book or a course or a coaching package or whatever product you have, right? So, um, so naturally, I think your question that you posted in MasterHeart was, well, does my, so if I'm doing it that way, that second way, right? Is my, my book is stage three. That's literally what a product is. It's stage three content. So does that mean I'm only taking the stage two pieces into stage three? It's a good question. Ideally, yes, mm. if you have enough stage two things, mm. but if you don't have enough stage two things, you can take things from stage one as well that you think, yeah, this is probably going to work to fill in some of the pieces. Mm. Or you might decide after you put the book together or an outline of it together, hmm, maybe I, I, I need to fill in this piece and that piece. Mm -hmm. And those mm -hmm. become your blog post too, Yeah, cool. in addition to being put into the book. So um, basically stage three, you know, you basically take all the blog posts, all the stage two things you've written, categorize them and go, hmm, which category is going to become a book? And I recommend, honestly, to keep books short these days. Mm. Um, when I say these days, I mean, really, ever, ever since the Kindle age, you know, ever since the digital book age, keep books short, people, you know, it doesn't have to be 300,000 words or like mm. it doesn't have to be Moby Dick all right it's it's it, it can literally Kindle has a bunch of categories Amazon Kindle has a bunch mm. of categories and people are browsing one hour reads uh, yep. down to 15 minute or 10 minute reads they have 
one hour, 15 minute reads, half hour reads, 45 minute reads, one hour reads, two hour reads, yeah. and then they have a go. So, so people are also much more likely to review your book if they finished reading it. Mm. So you'll get more reviews if you have a shorter book. Cool. And it's also easier to publish and people don't complain. I mean, about the size of the book. I mean, yeah, if it's a 15 minute read and if it's like $10, uh, that, you, you know, however long your book is should be comparable to the price of, of, of the books. My, my books are $5 on Kindle. It probably should be even lower, but I'm also purposely trying to filter out people's like, you know, I have to make a little slightly conscious decision to pay $5 for the book. Mm -hmm. It's not a dollar book. It's not a 99 cent book. It's a $5 mm -hmm. book. It's probably shorter than most $5 books. I don't care. Mm. Um, so Natasha, does that help? Yes, I think so. I think the other thing is, even though I haven't been tracking stage one, two, three, I do have like courses that I've made from content that I did develop in a similar process. I just don't have a spreadsheet for it. So yeah, and I'm Thank glad you brought this up because you don't have to have a spreadsheet to track content. And this is mm. very important next, next point, which is wherever you've been posting your content already has metrics. Yeah. Whether it's your web, if you have you've posted content on your website as a blog, your blog has metrics. Your website already has metrics. Mm. Whether you've installed Google Analytics or not, Squarespace, Wix, whatever WordPress, whatever website thing you use already gave you metrics from the beginning. They did. So you can literally look at your website's metric and go, hmm, which blog post got the most, you know, got the, got the most views. That's one mm -hmm. metric. Second mm -hmm. one is which blog posts have the lowest bounce rate. That's the, that's another metric. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so that's the blog post metrics. If you post the things on, on medium, medium, of course, gives you metrics, how, how many reads and fans, if you mm -hmm. posted things on Facebook, Facebook gives you metrics. So even mm -hmm. if you never kept a spreadsheet of this stuff, all your metrics were always kept by other people. It's yeah, called, true. you know, the platform you use. Yeah, cool. I don't seem to get any engagement on my blog at all. And um, same with my Facebook, but, you know, I am using distribution now and trying to turn that around. And at some level, I kind of know what people have engaged with. And I looked at my Google yes. the other day and someone had spent eight hours literally just reading a whole blog, oh, eight minutes reading eight a minutes. whole blog. And I thought, oh, wow, people actually do come and read a whole blog of mine. I was like, wow, that's yeah. cool. So, yeah. yeah, so so that that's mm -hmm. a, that's actually sorting it by time spent on page. If you have Google Analytics, you can sort yeah. by time spent on page to show you what what how much yeah. time they spend on the, which pages have the most time spent. Mm -hmm. And so that's another good metric yeah. to say, hmm, there you go. I'm so excited. I really didn't think I was going to be inspired to write a book so soon, but I'm super excited. Thank you very much. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. Thank you. And um, I want to thank, uh, let's see, Gregory uh, chatted to say, I love how your Kindle books contain link chat links at the end of each chapter to the stage two videos. That's exactly what I do. I mean, if you get any of my Kindle books, the, every single, as you now know, every single chapter used to be a stage two piece. And so at the end of each chapter, I'm able to link basically to say, well, I'm able, I, I, I make a video for each of my stage two pieces. So it's like, I, I can link to say, Hey, watch the companion video for this chapter. It's basically, yeah. So they, they, and then the nice thing is when they click on that, that goes to my Facebook video, which means if they, they read the book, they click on the video to go to my Facebook page to watch the video. And now they're automatically roped into my Facebook business page, warm audience, which means I can now reach them through Facebook ads. That's a whole other topic, not for this video, but anyway, thank you for, thank you for watching this.